So Harry, I see a lot of people who've got bruxism, and that's a common symptom people have. How might people describe that, or what might they experience if they're getting bruxism? Well, a lot of people don't know they have it. So I suppose it's a bit like sleep apnea. Uh, often someone else tells them. So I'd say probably 10, 15% of people will know because their partner's told them they're making noises. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it might be their dentist who's had a look in their mouth, and they've seen that there's wear in their teeth. Yeah, sometimes I might get jaw pain as well. Yeah. And what sort of problems can bruxism cause for people? Yeah, bruxism will generally cause three sorts of problems. But at the outset, what I should say is that a lot of people think it's normal. So there's theories there that bruxism comes from prehistoric times where man needed to sharpen their teeth. But, and it's got to be acknowledged that most people do some degree of bruxism. But the mm -hmm. problems that can occur are usually three sorts of problems. Yeah. Wear on teeth, so excessive wear on teeth or mm -hmm. crowns restorations that break, teeth that fracture, or sometimes they just wear down over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, overloading of muscles, so people will get headaches, so they sort of wake up in the morning. Generally it's morning, that's a telltale sign. If mm -hmm. they wake up and a lot of their jaw pain or headaches is there soon after waking, within an hour of waking, you've got to be a bit suspicious of bruxism. Mm -hmm. So overloading of muscles and headaches. And the third thing is what's called temporomandibular joint problems. So mm -hmm. there's a small joint in front of the ear, the temporomandibular joint that connects the jaw to the skull, yeah. and that joint can be overloaded so you can get pain on chewing, pain on opening and closing and clicking noises. And if people think they've got bruxism, what should they do? Well, probably the best place to go is to the dentist who will make an assessment and, and then treat it, yeah. uh, depending on what the problem is, so diagnosing the problem first. Yeah. And what are the sort of common treatments a dentist might use? Well, for clenching and grinding of teeth, where the teeth are worn, a, a simple splint, it's called an occlusal splint, is made, it's a small plastic device which fits over the teeth. It's really quite comfortable to wear and people kind of will wear it long term. Mm -hmm. And it's a great insurance policy for protecting teeth. And often dentists that are doing expensive or extensive dental work, crowns and bridges and veneers and implants, they'll make a splint to protect the teeth. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a simple thing to do, which works really well. Um, and if it's to do with the jaw joints um, or headaches, then there's ways of stopping clenching, or at least helping people. It's very hard to stop clenching because it mm -hmm. comes from the brain. It's, we call it centrally mediated. So you know, we used to think it was due to stress or personality disorders or things yeah. like that. But now it's known that, you know, it, that, that people often inherit it Mm -hmm. It's it's worse during times of stress, but generally there are conservative things that you will do to help people with jaw joint problems. It might involve uh, physiotherapy, uh, being careful of the sort of chew foods that you eat, as sort of avoiding chewing gum or lots of chewing or wide opening. Um, I think what, one of the most useful things that I've found over the years is to help people with their daytime cleansing because we've been talking about sleep bruxism, yes. but a lot of people combine that with clenching their teeth during the day and they're not aware they're doing it okay. and so I spent a lot of time on that so probably the most important thing I tell my patients is that teeth are not meant to touch at all during the day outside of meal times okay. <laughs> and a lot I'm of conscious of that now yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right it, well a lot of people say to me oh I thought it was normal to touch your teeth I'm doing it all the time yeah. but a lot of people say I'm not sure if I do it I'll, and I'll say well let me know next time and they're often amazed they come back and they say their teeth are touching for long periods of time typically when they're feeling stress, someone's annoying them, mm -hmm. time deadlines, sometimes just physical exercise. They could be swimming or in the gym and they're clenching. Yeah. And just helping people find that rest position of the jaw during the day is really important because there's some evidence that the more you can do that during the day, there's a carryover effect at night where you do less at night as well. So Harry, what's an exercise people could do during the day if they're aware of clenching during the day? Right, so as soon as they're aware that their teeth are touching, it's really best for them to find what we call the rest position of the jaw, where there's just no muscle tension at all. Because a lot of people will put their tongue between their teeth or tissues or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's still some muscle tension there. So a simple way to do it is I get people to feel their main clenching muscle, which is called the masseter. And you might want to try it, David, just under the cheekbone up yeah. the top there, and just have a clench. Can you feel yeah. that muscle switch on? Yeah. So if you just relax the muscle, let the muscle just soften and loosen. As soon as you did that, the jaw just dropped. Mm -hmm. And that's the rest position. And another way to find that rest position 
is which which dentists have known for years is to say the letter N, and after you finish saying N, leave everything the way it is, and that's the rest position, mm -hmm. and then your job is just to notice and be aware and maintain that position outside of function, outside of meal times. Mm -hmm. For the A to Z of sleeping well, head to the hub, sleephub.com.au.